Dr. Perry Wilson is with Yale School of Medicine and joins us now. You fill in the blank. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Um, wow, yeah, I, I, I'm worried about this one. Um, we saw significant spikes in coronavirus infections after Thanksgiving and after Christmas, and Super Bowl parties could be much worse. First of all, we have these new variants circulating, which are more infectious. Secondly, you know, at a Super Bowl party, people are, are cheering and yelling and, and spewing particles into the air. There's the food in Super Bowl parties, you know, the finger food and the chicken wings where people are coming into close contact. There's alcohol, which tends to make people not behave as well and not be quite as socially distant. So this could be a major, major issue. The safest way to watch the Super Bowl is the same way you're watching Bridgerton. It's with your own household and, you know, <laughs> complaining about it online. Now there's a comparison. <laughs> Bridgerton or the football. <laughs> I love it. They're, they're, um, they're, they're, they both have a lot of drama. <laughs> well, that is a good point. I take it that he's been watching. Let's talk about the vaccines, shall we? Is it possible um, to mix and match? Like if your first one is Moderna's, can your second one be Pfizer's? Uh, yeah, so so we don't know is, is, is the answer, but it's exciting that actually there's a study going on in the UK right now that is testing that very idea, taking people and vaccinating them with one brand of vaccine uh, initially and then giving a different booster. I'll tell you that biologically speaking, there's a really good chance this will work. The vaccines are showing similar proteins to the immune system, and there's no real reason to think that they wouldn't have a boosting effect. And I'll point out that even a single dose of the multi-dose vaccines provide some protection. Um, but I'm really glad to see that this is being formally tested before it's advocated as a strategy. Okay, so AstraZeneca doctor says that trial results show its vaccine can reduce transmission of the virus. Now, you could read that in a couple different ways. Do we mean transmission from the person who just got vaccinated to another person, or do we mean like in a community? Um, well, 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 both, and, and this is really exciting data because we've known for all these vaccines that have come out, that they reduce symptoms. They make many people not have any symptoms and, and, and not even get the coronavirus, um, which was great for the individual who was vaccinated, but we never really knew, but does that protect from an asymptomatic person potentially transmitting virus to someone who hasn't been vaccinated yet. And this is the first data to suggest that yes, actually vaccines have the capacity not only to protect you, but to help protect the community. Um, it is not perfect. It doesn't mean that a vaccinated person doesn't have to wear a mask or can you know go to a huge Super Bowl party, um, but it is really, really encouraging that vaccines are gonna be a path to getting us back to some semblance of normal. Okay, so are you going to watch the Super Bowl or are you watching Bridgerton during the Super Bowl? Oh, well, no, I'm watching the Super Bowl. You got to watch the Super Bowl live. You know, Bridgerton, you can, um, you can binge <laughs> later on. I'm just on. playing with you. <laughs> Dr. Perry Wilson, thank you very much. Appreciate it.